Cornelius Escher Huntsaker. Uh, and we're going to be talking about Escherreal today. Escherreal has a few complicated concepts. Uh, there's deals with uh, flipping gravity around, it deals with impossible objects, it deals with changing perspective. So in order to help understand some of these things, we're going to play a little game. And I need four volunteers. Tom, Sean, Laura, Drew. All right. So, well, hold on, hold on. Okay, so look at the floor. So let's see. Tom, you'll be right here. Sean, you'll be right over here. Uh, Drew, you want to come up here? All right, there's little X's on the floor. You got a little X on the floor there, floor? Yeah, okay. All right, so here's the game that we're going to play. What we got to do here is we have to get this guy right here. Over to the blue side. No. Over here. Oh. All right? And how we do that is using these sticks with shapes on them. Yes. All right? So I can only walk along the tops of these shapes, and if I run into a wall, then you fail. So I'll do that. <laughs> Here's the trick the four people holding the shapes cannot look at the screen. So we need everybody else to help turn these shapes around, all right? So look, uh, so if you've got a shape real quick, uh, just make sure that you're lined up with these red bars. If you can see red over here, then it's not good. So put, put your shape right on the X, put the post right on the X on the floor. I mean, we need to we need to come over. Uh, that is, no, that's Laura. No, that's I'm good, bro. That's you. I'm right here. There we go. All right. So we're gonna need everybody to help these guys turn these shapes and make a cohesive path, starting from over here, for my little guy right here to walk along this the shadows and get all the way to the other side to the foot. All right. Um, Phil thinks that you guys are going to do awful and it's going to take you like three minutes to do this. I think you're yeah. going to be awesome and it's going to be like one minute. So prove me wrong. Go. Tom, go take that Which direction? <laughs> there you go. Keep them lined up, guys. Move to the right. Stop. Rotate. Zero left. Yeah. 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 We're leaning a bit. I can see some red over here. Laura. You're taking up all of you're taking up all of Tom's space here. Stop. I cannot jump. I cannot jump. I can only walk. If I run into a wall, yeah. Yeah. We're good, you think? No, no, we're not good. Okay. Other way. 
Uh, yeah. I think we can all agree on that. By a rock. So different angles for, um, for different shapes. All right. <clears throat> No. <laughs> All right. The mirror marble. This is kind of a key thing. It's a recurring motif in Escher's artwork. And what the mirror marble does, it's going to be in the environment. And when you touch the mirror marble, it's going to flip gravity to the opposite surface. So this is a game called B B B B B B B, and it does something similar. Not quite the same. So in this game, you can flip gravity whenever you want. Except in midair. So we're going to do something similar. Rocky's going to be able to jump and and kind of flip gravity, and when he when he hits the mirror marble, kind of like those green. These, these, not those. These. <laughs> so in BBBBB, when you hit that line, it'll flip gravity again, and then when he comes down here, it'll flip gravity again. Uh, and it'll be similar for the mirror marble, except in BBBBB, you can only go up and down. In Escherreel, you can go in any direction. So if I'm standing over on this wall and I jump over here, then I will be flying that way. Similar to diagonals as well. So it's, it's just going to detect wherever, whatever plane you were last on and turn <coughs> out the gravity to the opposite. So bringing it all together, you're going to well, first, we're going to be taking Escher's artwork and we're going to be iterating on that and making it more colorful. And I don't want to say his artwork is uninteresting, but it's a little bit plain compared to today's standards. So we want to make it more interesting. Uh, we're going to be using the Infinis specs to uh, flatten the environment. All right, uh, that, That's kind of how you're going to go in between a flat environment and a 3D environment. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have interesting and detailed environments with a lot of complicated things, stairs going off walls, things like that. Um, and, but we still want to stay kind of true to Escher and what he's all about. So I'm going to open it up for questions here. And uh, tell me what you got. Thank you. How is this going to differentiate itself from Echochrome? So Echochrome is another thing that we looked at, as well as uh, Perspective by DigiPen. Um, and to differentiate it, one, Echochrome is really boring to look at, which is something that we do not want for this game. We want this to be really interesting. Um, so artwork-wise, there's going to be a huge room for improvement. Um, secondly, you can't flip gravity in Echochrome. You can only kind of just change the perspective. So we're going to take that mechanic, which works, and turn it into something that is a lot more interesting. So, yeah. And then in this is the beginning of your presentation, but is it more of a puzzle game then? So yes. Like vision, like, platform puzzle. Right, it's a platform puzzler, yes. Yeah, sorry, I did forget to mention that. It is a platform puzzler. This is a 3D game. Um, so, yeah. So solving puzzles in puzzle games generally it takes that long, but it's difficult. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine actually creating the puzzles themselves are even more challenging. Right. So how many puzzles do you think you know, we can get into a game like this? So how many puzzles can we get into this within scope is really the, the question. Um, I envision our shadow game as being an actual puzzle in the game. So there's one that we've already designed. Um, we can look at a lot of other games with similar type of things and draw inspiration for that. So to answer your question, um, I guess it really depends. It really depends on, I mean, we, we want Rafi to make the ascent and we want the difficulty curve to go up 
Um, and we want the player to empathize with Rafi and be like, oh, I'm getting smarter. I'm contributing to Escher's like ideas. So as long as we achieve that goal, I guess I don't think it really matters. Yeah. Did you build the fire rocks thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I believe you did a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mentioned that the main a uh, main difference in this you see color as opposed to black and white. Does color play any other like, mechanical purpose as opposed to just being aesthetic? It's an interesting question, and uh, I will. Let's see. So I looked at. Look at uh, this right here. This image of relativity, which is this, and. The wall, like the faces, are different colors. So I think that it could be, we can make it a little bit easier to understand um, if we do some color scheme for, for navigating the environment, just to make it not completely mind blowing, even though it's probably going to be like that anyway. <laughs> All right, Ryo first, and then Sean. Um, so is it a side scroll the game where you can take control of your camera to change the? Uh, I guess the silhouette of objects in the world? At parts, it's side-scroller-ish, but it's really a 3D game at its heart. So uh, there's like 2D platforming, I guess, and, and with that, you're also going to be able to like change the perspective at which that 2D plane is going to be flattened. Um, so I've only showed, like in Fez, there's only four directions. In Escherreal, we can do more than that. Uh, so we can make different um, platforming levels out of the same level using the objects. So I guess it kind of is. It's 2D. It's 2D, but it's, it's really 3D at its heart. Sean. Um, <clears throat> I'm really digging this idea, but I got just a few basic questions. Um, what's the ultimate goal of the game? The ultimate goal is to make Rafi not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but also, so he's going to have like a respect for art, where as of right now, the only thing he respects is like hanging out at the corner store and like loitering and being <laughs> you know, like miscreant right now. So we want, so the, the objective of the game is to just sort of, you know, navigate through Escher's environment. But the, the focus, the real, the idea that we're really getting at is taking <coughs> Rafi and making you be less like Rafi and, and kind of ascend with him. And then um, what engine do you plan on using? That's an interesting question. Uh, we looked at uh, Havoc. If we need to do some of this rendering stuff and we need access to the source code, uh, the Havoc Vision Engine gives us that access, whereas UDK, we don't have you know, access to the source code. So I guess that would be something to really discuss during pre-pro. And then finally, do you have a method so far as to how you're going to go about building, building levels? Are you going to start with 2D and then make them 3D? Or are you going to start with 3D and figure out how we're going to shift them to 2D? What's your, what's your process for how you're going to invent more levels? Uh, well, I guess I'll tell you the process for how to design this thing, uh, this the little shadow game, because it's going to be pretty similar to that. Um, and basically, first I started off with the idea that, OK, we need to get from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. That's pretty simple, right? So I guess that's more of a 2D kind of concept. And then we made these shapes, and we made the shapes work, I guess, with what we were doing. Um, we also, though, want to take inspiration from Asher's actual artwork and see how we can take those and turn those into really interesting and compelling puzzles. OK, Laura. What do you see as the job programming challenges for this? And how do you plan on overcoming them? This might be a question for Andrew Moore. That would be a question for Andrew Moore. But Andrew, can you uh, speak to that, please? Yeah, so basically what we can do is, for all the objects, uh, I kind of talked to Paul about it yesterday. We can um, just keep track of the important points on it. And mostly use that data, and then you know we can make calculations based on their angle at the time to figure out where those important points are that are important points to connect. And so um, it sounds like it will be challenging, but not it won't be challenging to the extent of being overscoped. 
it didn't sound like it'll be about the right challenge. Um, it's going to you know, be about keeping track of data with the objects besides just the model, but like the model data, but, but extra data. Okay. okay. Yep. You mentioned uh, the great terrifying enemy, French toast, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Is that to introduce sort of like a, a time limit element, like to get away from to solve the puzzle in time, or how is how is he going to be introduced into the game? Yeah. Okay. So, um, kind of take a look at the that the rolling everything rolling uphill uh, thing that I showed you, and imagine those as being the actual um, the creatures, the the curl up creatures. And so maybe you need to walk up these ramps at some point and avoid them. Um, we could do time challenge. I looked at another one of uh, Escher's pieces, which I don't actually have uh, available right now. It's called Gravitation. And there's a big, it's like a turtle hedron. It's like a star with turtles in it. And you could like escape from that. It's like a big rolling boss monster sort of thing. All right. So yeah, it would be mostly just to just hinder the player. All right. One last question. Yep. Going back to the, the color aspect of the game, um, I think you're going to change perspective at some point. Mm -hmm. When you do that, does the color change on what face you're about to go to, and does that affect what you can and cannot go to? Like, does this the color mean you can't jump to that area once you switch your perspective? No, no. Uh, it's mostly, I, I would say that's mostly just to get the player, the colors would be to just get the player oriented, really. Thank okay, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.